Good evening. Well, it's been a while since I made a YouTube. Anyway, tonight I want to show you some of the things I've done with my 704 uh, mill. Uh, a lot of these things you can do with uh, any mill, but there's some improvements that have made, a, made it a lot easier for me to get some work done and, and certainly a lot easier to get a lot of accuracy. Now the Grizzly 704 I've got here, G0704, it's a uh, variable speed and it came with a little Z-axis digital readout here that, that worked fine. It was a, a sure pleasure to use. Uh, however, it wasn't very bright. So I decided to put a DRO on this thing and I swapped that unit out, this Grizzly one it came with, with an eye gauging setup allowed me to put, uh, I put the z-axis in first and then it, it comes with a little arm like that and I added a uh, the x and a y-axis and boy it changes a lot of things that uh, I can do uh, with my mill that I wasn't able to do before. I'm, after using this thing for a couple of months uh, I don't look at it as a, as a uh, Luxury, it's, it's, it's damn near a necessity. And I could have spent $1,200 for a, a, a magnetic scale uh, DRO Pro model like I've got on my lathe. But this one I've got about $150 in. And as far as actually is concerned, uh, uh, I think it's just great. It allows me to work down to uh, a thousandths or less in, in any axis. So I'm quite pleased with it. You got to take a little imagination to to get it set up in that. While I while I was at it, I had to take my my swerf guard off. And I'm sure a lot of you that got uh, mill drills and that have got these little accordion type swerf guards back there, and they're adequate, but I didn't care for it, so what I did was, uh, when I finished up putting the DRO on, I uh, made a point, uh, I hope you can see that down here, uh, I got some rubber material, it's a piece 24 by 36, it's actually a, a uh, cushion pad, uh, but it's been very durable, and I cut that 6 inches wide by by uh, about 24 inch long and rather than an accordion thing this thing covers my my uh, the opening into my column and and base and does a very good job of uh, of keeping the swarf out of there and I just used the, the hardware uh, that was holding the accordion style thing on there now I've got this one piece and if it ever wears out uh, it was very cheap I I think I paid $12 for a 24 by 36 inch piece, so I've got enough for about five more replacements here if that one ever wears out. <clears throat> the other thing I did with this mill uh, is I upgraded to a what I think is a, a very good vise. I've been shopping around, I know a lot of you probably looked at them, and you know, you're looking at $600 or thereabouts for a good five or six inch vise. On a mill this size, uh, I was using a four, a, four, a four inch palm grin, which served me pretty well, but it was, repeatability was a problem, and, and it, even though it held the part in pretty good, sometimes they'd climb out. Well, I came across this $300 uh, chuck, uh, I think it's probably made in China, but maybe India. Uh, and they assured me, uh, Shars, they assured me that this thing would hold uh, five ten thousandths or better. And I thought, well, for three hundred dollars, uh, I think I'll try it out. And I've been real pleased with it. Uh, I mounted on the on a lathe. It's uh, it's just right for my work envelope here. Uh, 
being a five inch, it's a little heftier than my than my other one. I did not like the handle that came with it, so I I made my own speed speed wrench for it. Uh, I like this style of wrench. Now, one of the big benefits, uh, I did some other things. I made a I made a collar to go around the the, the unmovable spindle here with a with a variable speed mill uh, that's not a gearhead. When you want to tram in your things like tra tramming in your vise and stuff, it's hard to get something. So I made a little collar here to hold my my no go uh, arm and an indicator for tramming in that and, and that. And so I've got this mill trammed in. It took a little while, but it's trammed in to. Uh, <laughs> less than a ten thousandths on the left and right x and y or x axis and I had about three ten thousandths of uh, of uh, nod towards towards me well I got a breaker bar and a ten millimeter wrench to t and I the, the the bolts on the back of the column are tight but I got them to move just a just a smidgen, and I think my nod now is uh, right about a one ten thousandths. Well, that that's uh, by anybody's book that's good. I got the vise uh, locked in there good, and so uh, uh, trammed in good, so I can do some pretty good work. Now, one of the benefits of having this DRO, uh, one of the big benefits is, is that I can create a uh, I can position holes by using coordinates, and I've got some software. It's uh, there's lots of it available out there that'll go on your computer, or your uh, tablet, or your phone. I'm using a thing called the Machinist Calculator, and for example, here I've got a block that I wanted to put a, a, a holes in all four corners, uh, equally spaced. So I described in this software, I described a, uh, this is a four by four by one half inch thick block. And uh, so I described a, a uh, the center of it is a Y zero X zero. And then my first hole would be at 45 degrees, which put it up here in this corner. <clears throat> and I wanted a, a four inch, I wanted these on a four inch circle which placed them right out here in the, the four corners. Of course, the 45 degrees uh, put me out here, split the difference between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, put me right out here at the corner. That made it so nice because I run that program, I printed it out. I doubt if you can see this very well, but it gives me the coordinates to all four holes. X, uh, I run X to 1.4142. Then Y to 1.412, and then uh, drill, uh, drill that hole. Go to the next one, it would be minus Y or minus X and a plus Y, same measurement. Uh, but anyway, it gave me the coordinates of all four holes. If I want to do three holes or 12 holes or 37 holes, uh, it would give me all those coordinates and you just follow it over there, and, and uh, it makes it really nice. Uh, you just find the center of your block, and uh, that's your reference point. Uh, <clears throat> now, the other things that I did with this is I had I added a power feed. Mills I've had in the past always had a power feed. I didn't have one on this. Believe me, if you don't have a power feed, you can you can get by without it. But gosh, it's uh, uh, it's so much nicer if you do have it. Uh, in my opinion, you get it's easier to get a good finish. Uh, it's uh, a lot less tiresome, but the, the finish has improved quite a bit. Now let's see here. I uh, I got the DRO. Oh, the thing I did is I the draw bar that came with this had a little bitty thing that just took a little like a little six millimeter wrench. So I've got I, I got some some uh, 1144 stress-proof steel 
that's really good stuff for that. So I built my own draw bar with a with a, a hex uh, nut here that takes a half inch socket at the top, and uh, it spins real true. The one that came with this had a little bit of wobble up here, which it didn't hurt anything, but it just kind of distracted me. I didn't like it. So I made a draw bar, and that was uh, uh, pretty simple to do. Well, I, uh, I'm going to call us good for tonight. I'm going to go on to the next video, or the next video, I'm going to cover what I'm going to do with this block uh, that I've got in here. And I thank you all very much, and have a good evening. Thank you.